Welcome to Barry Citadel this morning. October month already. Hard to believe, isn't it? It's October the 4th today. It's great to be with you. I know that we aren't gathering together uh, in person, but what a great way through technology to get together, to worship God, and to stay in touch with one another. If you're new to our live stream, welcome. We'd love to get to know you better. So below is an email address. Send us an email, won't you? So we can touch base and get to know you better. Every day on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel is our devotional series. So uh, tune in there every day to get your daily devotionals. On Thursday, we started our Bible study last week, and we've been able to connect Facebook and Zoom together. So if you're not comfortable uh, with the technology of Zoom, then you can join us on Facebook. If you'd like to join our Bible study, uh, if you're on Facebook, go down to the uh, link onto the side, Barry, Bible, Barry Citadel Bible Study Group, and ask to join, and we'll send you the information every Tuesday. Jim will be sending out the information to you for what we're going to be doing on the Thursday. So join us Thursday afternoons at 2 o'clock live on Zoom, and let's uh, study God's Word together. Hopefully by now you've either received an email, opened your email, or received a letter in the mail about our regathering plans. It was decided that we would not regather at this time. Um, 
There is no future date for that, but we will keep you informed. This is for church services as well as any kind of small group gatherings at the core. The core will not be reopening for any of those programs at this time. Our condolences to Helen Lambert on the passing of her brother-in-law Eddie. Please continue to pray for the family. And also condolences to Ross and Olive Perry on the passing of their granddaughter Amanda. Please continue to pray for our church family. For those that are looking to tithe, remember there's four ways. The first one is through our website at www.berrysalvationarmy.org. Click on the Tithe Donate button and you can give your tithe through credit card. If you wish to mail your check, you can mail it to the Salvation Army Barry Citadel, 151 Lillian Crescent, Barry, Ontario, L4N5X5. The third way is pre-authorized payment. Again, reach out to Jim Willis and his email address will be below and he'll arrange to have that looked after. In the fourth way, on Tuesdays and Fridays from 8.30 to 11.30, you can drop your tithe off here at the core. God bless you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 1 and it says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But who delights in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night? That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but of the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Amen. Our opening song this morning, Power in the Blood, it's the fourth verse. Would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood. Would you live daily? His praises to sing there's wonderful power in the blood. Let's sing this song together, friends.
Time for Bramwell. Come on down and let's ha listen to Bramwell's message for us today. Hi kids, nice to see you. For lots of you, it's been the first week back at school, right? Oh, not the first week. We didn't meet last week, so I suppose some of you have been at school for two weeks. You've been just a week in school. It's really hard. Oh, um... Why is it hard? Oh, you feel like you're not doing very well this year. Mm. Obedient school is a lot harder than last year. I see. Oh, you're in grade two now. Good, good. You would already said that. You have to do a lot of work that's hard, right? And you have lots of homework. Oh. All right, well, you're home. You can do your homework. You don't understand it. Oh. Would you like some help? Yeah, I could ask the kids to help too. Show me what your homework is. It's the paper that's up here. Okay. Oh, it's got pictures on it. Was this from your teacher? She said it would make you feel better about school. Well, all right, let's have a look. I think maybe I better get the kids to help, okay? All right, kids, here you are. This is the letter that Bramwell's teacher sent him. Can you figure out what it says? You know the first word. Yeah. The arrow points to the dog's eye. So the first word is I. Can anybody figure out the second one? Yeah, it does look like paws, right? Not one paw, but two. And if you add ED, it's the word paused. No, it has nothing to do with feet. It means to stop. Let's see what else it says. I paused to... That's right. The little girl is praying. And the last part is really easy, Bramwell. I think you and all the other kids could probably say it together. For you to... Day. What a nice message your teacher gave you. I paused to pray for you today. That does make you feel better. I'll bet it does, yeah. Yes, grown-ups need to know that people pray for them too. In fact, Paul, one of the very early leaders in the church, 
almost always started his letters to his friends with something like, um, I always thank God for you, or I, when I remember you, I always pray for you. Yeah, it's wonderful to know that people are praying for us. And maybe that's something we should be doing for each other. Do you think so? Yeah, mm -hmm. we do pray for the kids, don't we? Yeah. I heard that we're going to have a chance to meet them on Zoom. Won't that be fun? Yeah. And this week, kids, we'll be talking to your parents about when we're going to have our very first Just Kids Club on Zoom. So hopefully we'll be able to see you all then. Yes, I think so. Grandma wants to share his teacher's note with everybody who's watching this morning. And know that I paused to pray for you today. Good boy. Sure, or you can blow the kids a kiss. Are you ready? Here we go. Good job. Yep. And hopefully we'll actually get to see you before too long. Take care, kids. God loves you. Again, and my thanks to Sandy Patton for providing us music this week. Her offering, God will give you glory. Let's listen, friends. selection this morning. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Let's listen as our band brings us their offering this morning.
The scripture reading this morning is taken from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13, and it says this, Jesus speaking, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both of us. Uh, and you instead go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves but while they were on their way to buy the oil the bridegroom arrived the bride the virgins who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut later the, the others also came sir sir they said open the door for us but he replied i tell you the truth i don't know you therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. The word of the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, as we open up your word this morning, we ask that you would open our hearts and our minds to the message that you have for each and every one of us. We don't know the day and the hour when you're coming back, but we need to be ready. Be prepared. Father, help us to prepare our hearts this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. My message is entitled, Be Prepared, I'll Be Back. Now, when I was writing the, the title, I, I, I couldn't help but have the voice of Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll be back, the Terminator, in my head. Sometimes that's where I go, friends. I'm sorry, but that's just me. If you're writing a letter to people who are suffering, what is the one thing above all others that you'd want to say to them. Probably what you want to say, something like this, what you're going through right now is not in vain. When this terrible ordeal is over, you'll be able to look back and see that your faithfulness was worth it all. That reassuring message was given constantly and repeated often to the early Christians as they faced all kinds of trials and every sort of message, messages. God sent them through his faithful people that what you're going through now, it's not in vain. And although it's terrible, we'll get through it. And in the end, God's faithfulness and your faithfulness to God will be rewarded. Writing this to you during a pandemic, where last week we decided that we were not going to regather in person because the numbers of the COVID-19 virus in Simcoe County have more than tripled. A very difficult decision that had to be made, a very difficult conversation with the ministry board. I want to thank my ministry board there. They've worked very hard at ensuring that you're kept safe, ensuring that we love you enough not to regather at this time. Paul in his writings often writes about suffering. In Romans 8 and 17, he says, If indeed we suffer with him, we'll also be glorified together. And then he added in 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us. Paul writes to the Corinthian church, 2 Corinthians 4, 17 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working, us, is working for us a far more exceeding 
an eternal weight of glory. Do you see the whole pattern? Do you see where we're going? Peter, writing his epistles to the Christians, found out firsthand what it meant to be persecuted for their faith. The early church came under intense social persecution even before Rome began its effects on Christianity. So Christians often lost their jobs. They had their property confiscated. They were denied access to public markets. They suffered many other indignities. Many falsely accused and landed in prison because of their beliefs. And eventually, many would lose their lives. If you were to encourage the Christians who faced this sort of opposition, would it not make sense to talk about what the future holds for us? So Peter spends much of his second epistle doing just that, talking about the eventual destruction of the world and the second coming of Christ, if you read Second Peter. Christians who are faced with hardship and difficulty. The message of the end of times was a much needed doctrine. They needed to look beyond the pain and the afflictions and the difficulties of their present day and look to a time where there's more justice and judgment coming. They needed to live in the present with a view towards the hope in the second coming. Of Christ. They needed to know that Jesus meant what he said and that he'll be back. These truths tell us one thing. I remember as a Cub Scout, be prepared was the message, wasn't it, right? A K La. I mean, that's a long time ago. That's over 50 years for me as a Boy Scout. But I still remember that. We need to be ready. And this parable this morning, taken out of Matthew's Gospel, talks to us about the future. It talks about being prepared for the coming of Christ. Whatever it is, at home, at school, or at work, be prepared, be ready. In our private lives, in our public lives, be ready. In a nutshell, what it says is that we need to be prepared for the second coming of Jesus. We look at the 24th chapter of, say, of, of Matthew's Gospel, just the chapter before we're studying this morning, and he's just left the temple in Jerusalem. He's gone to the Mount of Olives with his disciples, and it's there. In the Mount of Olives, that Jesus begins to teach his disciples about the end of the world. Jesus talks about the signs that we'll be able to see at the end of the world. In Matthew 25, he talks about Judgment Day, when the Lord will separate the sheep and the goats. Keep reading down. And in the middle, we have our text, the parable of the ten virgins. Mount of Olives. Sheep and the goats, parable of the ten virgins. Beautiful wedding procession. So to understand this a little bit, we have to go back into Jewish history to understand the wedding procession, understanding what it looks like. So Jesus, the great storyteller, tells them something that they'll understand. According to Jewish custom of the day, when two people were to be married, two ceremonies took place. First, there was a religious ceremony that bound the man and woman together as husband and wife. Then weeks or perhaps even months later, the bridegroom went to the home of the bride and escorted her back to his house, where they would begin living together as husband and wife. When it came time for the bridegroom to get his bride, the bride's attendants would wait for the groom and jo then join in the wedding ceremony procession 
There are lamps providing festive lights for this happy occasion. Our parable talks about ten brides, ten virgins waiting for their groom. Of course, the ten brides represent us, Christians. We are the ones that are waiting for the bridegroom, Jesus, to return. And while we don't know exactly when or where he'll return, we know that he will indeed return to earth and escort us, his faithful children, to the eternal wedding banquet. If you read the parable, it talks about two different kinds of virgins. The wise and the foolish. I think you need to look. On the outside, they all look alike. Ten brides waiting for their bridegroom. All ten were undoubtedly excited about being in this bridal procession. All ten had brought their lamps with them. All ten were patiently waiting for the bridegroom. All ten fully expecting to join the bridegroom at the feast. And all ten fell asleep while they're waiting. It's similar that when we look at those who profess to be Christians, we look at those who belong to a congregation, they can all look very much alike on the outside. They may be all be in church on a regular basis. They all might be actively involved in the mission of the church. They all might sit on various boards and committees. They all might be giving of their time and their talents and their treasures. They all may be waiting for the Lord to return. As the judge of the living and the dead. They may all be expecting to join the bridegroom at the wedding feast. But they may not all be prepared. When you look at the ten virgins, what was the one thing which separated the wise from the foolish? The wise had prepared. The wise had prepared. They not only brought their lamps, but they bought enough oil with them to make sure they had a lit lamp when the Lord Jesus comes back. Did the foolish ones forget? No. They neglected this. They probably anticipated there would be some kind of uh, common stock of oil or there, there would be time. There would be time to get all their affairs in order before the bridegroom came back. There would be a warning that the bridegroom was coming and then they would have the time to get what they needed. But it wasn't so. And do you know what the foolish brides neglected to prepare for? They couldn't share in the oil of the wise virgins. Maybe they assumed that because they were part of a congregation that had a big supply of oil, that that would get them to the feast. Maybe they assumed that there was enough oil to go around but that you didn't need to have your own personal supply of oil. They failed to prepare and to give time so that when the bridegroom did appear, they didn't have time to hurry off and do the last minute things that needed to be, got, to be done. They failed to prepare not knowing that the bridegroom would usher them right then and there off to the wedding feast. They weren't prepared for the door to be shut and for them not to be allowed in after the door closed. So we need to take a personal look at how we prepare. What does it mean to be prepared for the return of Jesus? Well, the Lord says, make sure you have oil in your lamp. And I don't think he's talking about oil that's produced by Shell or Esso or Petro-Canada. It's oil that's manufactured 
and maintained by the Holy Spirit. This oil is faith. Faith in Jesus is the only Savior that there is from sin. And that's how any sinner prepares for the return of Jesus, isn't it? The sinner's prayer. I'm a sinner. And I recognize that I need your help. The sinners who have that kind of oil, not only are they baptized that day, but they're also confirmed. Think about the sinner on the cross with Jesus. And we've talked about this an awful lot, but that image always comes back to me. That today you'll be with me in paradise is the words that Jesus says to a man who's never, maybe never, ever, ever heard what Jesus said. But his belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be prepared. You can't borrow oil for your mom and dad or from your brother, your grandparents. It's not the way it works. You can't borrow it from a friend at work. You can't borrow it from a friend anywhere else. You have to stand on your own faith, your own oil. There's a chorus, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the end of day. You have to have oil in your lamp. It's your lamp. You have to take ownership of your lamp. If Jesus comes back today, is there enough oil in your lamp is your relationship with Jesus real? Is it genuine? Are you truly concerned about your daily sin? Are you standing in front of an almighty God? This week in Bible study, we were talking about heaven and we were talking about Revelation 4. And the thing that amazed me was the 24 elders sitting in front of God. And every time the creature said, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, the elders fell. The elders, we believe, are the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 disciples representing all of us. And as soon as they heard the words, holy, 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 they knelt and took off their crowns and laid them on the floor in this reverent awesomeness of a God who created them. See, you need forgiveness. You need to forgive. I mean, are you satisfied with just being a church member? Your heart is empty and cold. Your relationship with the Lord is strained. Coming to church doesn't get you into heaven. Coming to church equips you for the war, the spiritual war that happens Monday morning till Saturday. We'll bind you up, we'll encourage you, and we'll send you into the warfare. That's what it looks like. Are you reading your Bible daily? Are you spending time with the Lord? Are you worshiping regularly and joyfully? Are you living your life out according to his word? So that when Jesus returns, he will find you faithfully waiting for him. See, if, the day, if today is the day that you want to restart, then restart. There's never a time that you can't fall on your knees figuratively as well. And ask for forgiveness. There's never a time that he won't forgive. And you say to me, yes, Captain, I know all this stuff because the Lord knows all. But he wants to hear it from you. He wants to hear it from your lips and from my lips. That we are sorry. That we need forgiveness for our sins. Are you ready? 
Are you prepared? He'll be back. It's up to us to be the not to be the foolish ones, but to be the wise ones. Don't let your Christianity be one that makes you look upright and holy on the outside. You need to be prepared. You need to, be, you need to humble yourself. You need to ask for forgiveness of sin. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Joyously enter into the wedding feast. Father God, your message this morning to us. That it doesn't matter what we look like on the outside, but you know our hearts. Create me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Our words come from your scripture. And Father, every day that we need to, to, to find time to spend with you. Help us to be the wise that are prepared for your return. Help us to spend time daily in your word. Help us to spend time with friends who maybe don't know you. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, breathe into us a new life. And in doing that, Father God, renewing our spirit with yours. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's interesting, in our reflection song this morning, in the fourth verse it says this, Room and time now give to Jesus, soon will pass God's day of grace, that door will close. Soon your heart be cold and silent, and your Savior's pleading cease. Have you any room for Jesus? Room for Jesus, King of glory. Hasten now, his word obey. Swing your heart doors widely open. Bid him enter while you may. As we reflect on this song, for those of you that don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, for those that haven't ever thought about being prepared for the end, maybe this is a good day you'll see a phone number and an email letter on the screen. And if you want to talk more about Jesus, we'll gladly talk to you about him. To know that relationship, to have that oil lamp ready, but to have the oil for the lamp ready as well. And how do you do that? Let's sing this song together and reflect on these beautiful words.
Our closing song again speaks about the return of Jesus. And it's in the fourth verse it says, Salvation, shout salvation till Jesus comes again to claim each blood-bought nation and o'er his kingdom reign. Soon we in realms of glory shall join the ransomed throng and sing the deathless story, redemption's endless song. And that's the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's hope in Jesus. Let's sing this together. Our sung benediction this morning, Lord, if your presence doesn't stay with us. Friends, have a great week. Be prepared. He'll be back. <laughs>